Well, this video is going to start with the same seven words that an awful lot of my videos start with. I was at the thrift store today. <laughs> Not only did this Dell Dimension E310 follow me home, so did the other two Dell machines that I will be getting to in a moment. But we'll start with this thing. Um, first off, no, I did not pay this much for it. Uh, the whole store was 50% off yet again today. So, I actually paid much less than that. Um, not to mention the fact that the uh, one of the other machines up there was significantly uh, was priced significantly lower than it probably should have been. And so, and combined with 50% off that one too, I'd say it kind of balanced out. But either way, this is a Dell Dimension E310. I look, ran its service tag on Dell's website. It appears to have been uh, to have originally shipped sometime in 2006. Um, it is carrying a Pentium 4 HT Prescott, as I recall. I think that's what Dell's website said. Um, I'll correct it in the video description if I'm wrong on that. Um, seems to be equipped with. Geez, I need better light in here. Um, actually, let me see if I can take care of that. Hang on one sec here. There we go. Now that problem solved thanks to this nifty little thing that I picked up at Goodwill a while back for four dollars. <laughs> sometimes things really do come in handy, <laughs> and sometimes they don't even cost all that much. But either way, it is equipped with two different optical drives. Uh, top one appears to be DVD-ROM and CD-ROM read-only. Bottom one is DVD and CD read-write. Uh, it has a floppy drive, so it's on its way to being a real computer, um, as UXW Bill would say. Um, it appears, actually I just kind of noticed this here, where the left USB port appears to be trashed, but the right one appears to be in okay shape. It only has a headphone jack on the front, no mic jack or anything. And it's got this kind of typical design with the hole through it here. I always found that a little bit interesting. Um, it has an XP, what does that say? XP Media Center CLA on it. Um, let's see what we've got back here if we move this laundry basket here. Uh, on the back here, it's actually got a remarkably sparse back panel, so I guess it's not, it does not make it all the way to being a real computer. Um, given an awful lot of ports are missing. <laughs> Seems to have been something of a budget machine, although it does have a telephone modem down at the bottom there. But I guess in 2006, they were still kind of including those, because a few people still had dial-up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically, it's a pretty basic machine, but um, ought to be useful for something. Um, and I figured, eh, for about $17, I'm sure I'll find something to do with it. At the very least, it's a full, it's, you know, a full width case, so I can put, you know, a decent array of different add-in cards into it. So, but let's go for a uh, grand run-up here. Uh, I tested it briefly in the store, so it shouldn't go up in smoke, but weirder things have happened. So, well, it almost powered up on its own. So we'll go ahead and, I actually press the button does have the uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 lights on the front. Let's get this thing into the boot menu here. Um, there's a better look at those diagnostic lights. Those are very handy. Definitely uh, much easier than beep codes. <laughs> um, let's see what we can do here. Let's jump into setup. This one doesn't seem to have the full array of diagnostics, just the hard drive ones. So... That's what we got here. Looks like it's got the original BIOS on it if it shipped in 06. Um, I can probably update that if I go on Dell's website and have a look. Uh, it's got a Pentium 4 at 2.8 GHz, hyper-threading capable, yes, and apparently 64-bit capable, which that ought to be quite interesting to play around with. I haven't really played around with 64-bit capable, capable, if I could talk, Pentium 4s, so that ought to be something fun to play with. Uh, we've got one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM, and it appears we only have two slots to work with, and both are populated. So I would, 
If I want to upgrade it, I'm going to have to scare up some 1 gig sticks or such. Maybe even 2 gig sticks if I have any of them floating around. Are the time and date set right? Um, well, it hasn't been flipped to daylight savings, but other than that, it's very close. Um, let's see what else we can do. Drives. Maybe it will actually tell me what hard drive. We have a Samsung hard drive in here, apparently. So, and the hard drive is present. That's a nice thing to know. So that's always fun. So let's actually uh, jump out of here and see if maybe it boots into something. Because that's always fun to do with these computers. Oh, this isn't a good sign. When XP does this, it's not usually much fun. I can probably guess what's going to happen next. It still seems to be going. Maybe it was just I turned it off badly when I tested it in the store. I guess it is. Let's see what we got. Well, we got a couple different users here. Well, of course, my uh, touchpad here isn't going to uh, respond. It's probably installing, the dr installing a driver or something. Um, this should go to show. Though, let me... Uh, I'll, I'll go off on a little sidebar here. This should go to show. This is why, if you're going to donate your computer, you need to wipe the hard drive. Or better yet, take the hard drive out. And get it properly disposed of. Or however you want to go about it. Because if you leave it in there, any random person who may not be as uh, nice as me <laughs> could buy this from the thrift store and boot it up and get access to any of these things. And even if these accounts, I haven't figured out if these accounts are password protected yet, because the uh, mouse is kind of long. Oh, there we go. Even if these are password protected, I could still, and they're not, and it's not password protected, even better. Okay, well that just became quite interesting. The first account that I tried to log on to there actually turned out to have a photo on the wallpaper, and I kind of made the assumption that that photo may very well have been of the previous owner or of the user of that account. And so I, I am cutting that part of the video out to protect the owner's identity. Um, in case anybody was wondering, it promptly then started popping up various error messages and windows and weird stuff every which way. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's got some kind of malware on it. Um, this is why it, I didn't connect it to the network when booting it up. Um, cause that could have been a mess. <laughs> so I also tried logging into the other account and there was a photo on the wallpaper there too. So either way, it looked like there was just random stuff on it. I didn't take a very close look. It was kind of hard to work with with error messages pump popping up every which way. Um, but I suspect I'm going to go ahead and before I do anything else, uh, deban this thing, make sure I wipe the crap out of, just wipe the hell out of anything that's on the hard drive and then proceed to install probably a fresh copy of XP on it, um, or Linux. I'm not sure which I want to put on here yet. Um, suspecting this might end up getting used perhaps to uh, generate graphics for any future live streaming activities I might do, um, because it is wide enough to accommodate a full-size graphics card with TV out. So that could definitely be useful for this, and, you know, Pentium 4 HT has got a decent amount of power um, for basic things like that. It's not powerful by today's standards, but powerful enough for, you know, basic office tasks and things like that, some basic graphics generation, if, you know, assuming I do it the way a lot of, a lot of uh, people in the Stereo Dust Particles community do, you know, just using PowerPoint to generate static slides. Um, and, you know, if I were to run some actual CG software on it, then it might be a bit lightweight, but for very basic graphics, it ought to work. Um, but either way, given this <laughs> seems to be quite messed up and not able to get much more of a demo, let's uh, move on to the next machine here. Up next, we have this Dell Optiplex GX270 uh, from around 2004, as I recall, from when I punched the service tag into Dell's website. This is also sporting a Pentium 4, this time not hyper-threaded. Um, this is definitely an older version of it. Um, 
I'm not entirely sure of its specs. As I recall, Dell's website kind of took a dump when I was running it on my phone. <laughs> so, wasn't able to get much information on it. So, but we'll find that out very shortly when I boot it up here. Uh, this one, you know, it's a small form factor machine. Uh, it's got one, uh, looks like DVD-ROM CD rewritable drive there. My camera would keep focused. It's got a floppy drive. Uh, so it is on its way to being a real computer. <laughs> um, underneath this little cover, you got this really weirdly placed, you can't really see it in there because it lands in a shadow, but there are two USB ports and headphone jack in there. So, they're a little hard to get to, but perhaps if you've got the machine on its side, it's not too, too bad. Although it would be interesting, you could get like a smaller flash drive or something and just kind of hide it in there. <laughs> not sure why you'd want to do that, but <laughs> you could. Um, let's see what you got on the back here. Now, if we go kind of upside down. Uh, we do have the full complement of legacy ports on this one, so this one really is a uh, real computer. <laughs> if you want to go continue with that joke. Um, we've got the usual suspects, plenty of USB ports. Um... We do have, despite being small form factor, this will actually accommodate full-size cards. So we might be able to do some fun stuff with this. Um, or it can look like it will also take a uh, smaller, um, small form factor bracketed card. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, what, what does this have on this? What certificate of authenticity does it have on the side of it? We got XP Pro. Um, so that, that can be very handy. I think I've got a disc for that somewhere. Um, no, I did not pay that much for it, nor did I pay this much for it. Again, 50% off. So I just conveniently made sure this price tag was on top when I put it in the shopping cart. <laughs> I assume the lower one was the correct one. You know, I figure they probably lower the price. I wouldn't think they'd raise it. Um, but I actually got 50% off that price. So that's why it balanced out for the price of the uh, dimension there. <laughs> Uh, but either way, let's go ahead and plug this one in and see what it will do. Um, maybe I'll go back and uh, open up these things and show you inside the machines later. Plug that in. No flames. It is powering up, so it probably has a dead CMOS battery. Indeed it does. Invalid configuration information. Now this always sits here a little while when it does the the automatic IDE configuration. So we'll uh, give it a moment. And it should prompt me, give me a prompt to go into setup shortly, so I can then check on its specs. There it goes. Yep. So let's jump in setup here. It's got the older style setup utility. Um, indeed looks to have been manufactured in 2004. Uh, it's got a 2.8 gigahertz Pentium 4. It's probably very similar to my uh, um, HP Compaq D530 over here. Should be this one, I believe. Yeah, this one's the D530. That one's a Dell Optiplex GX620, part of my uh, live streaming setup kind of hiding in there. Um, let's see what we've got here. Oh, uh, that's not what I wanted. System BIOS, where is that? I'm trying to figure out what hard drive it has. Well, it's probably later in. We'll go to memory information. We've got 512 megabytes of DDR RAM. Um, we are in dual channel mode. I believe this does actually have four slots in it, so that could be upgraded. Um, we'll move down to, well, we've seen the CPU. But, uh, there's the rest of the CPU information. Oh, uh, let's see. Is there anything else we can find here? Can turn on remote wake up, interestingly, if we wanted to do that. Okay. I don't know how... Well, I'm sure I'll find it later where the uh, exact model of the hard drive is listed. Let's try to uh, boot this thing up here. It's also got XP on this one. There it 
It's, despite being an optiplex, it is not in a domain configuration, it looks like. Hard drive's nice and quiet. Actually, the whole machine's nice and quiet. Of course, I hope that doesn't mean a fan's not working. Have a look back here. See if we can see anything. Else. I mean, I hear from back there, you can kind of hear things. So, either way. Oh, it's going to do the whole thing with the uh, driver for the touchpad again. At Microsoft, we care about your privacy. Well, those were the days. <laughs> I see a window back here that seems to be emulating the uh, Windows Vista and Windows 7 basic background. I'm not sure what it's what that is. So, wait for this to eventually decide what it's trying to do. Um, we've got, I'm not really sure what all this is doing here. Um, got a found new hardware wizard in the background. I'm not really sure what's, uh, does the keyboard work? No, apparently not. Looks like we haven't loaded Explorer, though. So I'm not sure what the deal is here. Yeah. Let's see, can we toggle and unlock? No, the whole keyboard's not working. Okay, this thing's probably locked up pretty hard here. So, um, guess we won't be figuring out what's on this machine just yet. Um,. Not sure if there's going to be a way around this, but again, I'll probably just end up wiping it anyway. Uh, I mean, sometimes it's interesting to kind of try and retrace a computer's steps and just see what it did in a past life, but um, if it's not going to cooperate, it's not worth it. So uh, let's move on to the last of the uh, three computers here. Okay, and last but not least, we have this Dell Optiplex 755. Um, this one... I don't know where the price tag went on it, but it said ten dollars. That one I actually did pay ten dollars for. But this, you know, I think I think that's worth it. Um, it has a Core 2 Duo of some kind in it. I'll have to check. Maybe the BIOS will tell me more. Um, got a DVD RW drive. Um, front panel's got two USB ports, uh, mic and headphone jacks. You know, the standard stuff. This one does not have a floppy drive, so it is not a real computer, per se. It is closer to being on its way to being a uh, weenie modern computer. <laughs> Again, to uh, borrow some terms there from UXW Bill. Um, <laughs> ah, it um, apparently had a previous life in uh, Arlington County Public Schools. So, that's always interesting to note. Um... I suspect that was a previous, previous life. I actually did run this one, uh, do a run-up on this one in the store, and I know basically what this one boots into. It does have most of its legacy ports. It doesn't have PS2 ports. Um, I think there was a, I believe there was a, an add-in little device, you know, breakout board, I guess you could say, that provided those. Um, but either way, let's uh, do a run-up here. does feel like running up. I thought this thing worked. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's just taking its sweet time about it. This one's running Windows 7. Interestingly. Let me pop the cover on this, make sure it's not doing something dumb. Like not running its fans. I don't know why it's being so sluggish. No, there is air coming across the CPU, so that's a good sign. It's dusty, though. <laughs> There's a fair amount of dust in there. So that'll need to be cleaned out. Well, it logged in awfully fast. Hey, the touchpad actually works on this one. It's got Aero enabled. Um, looks like Word 2007 sitting down there. Um, folder of drawings, apparently. That 
driver installed. It's got AVG antivirus free edition 2014. Uh, let's see what else is in here. Um, oh no, it's got 2010. Okay, I, I'm just apparently bad at my uh, Microsoft Office icons. <laughs> And yeah, now that I think about it, yeah, that is a 2010 icon. Um, what is? Oh, it's a burning, so it's probably CD burning software. It's a weird name, though. A Shampoo. <laughs> AVG. Yeah, just look, and WinRAR. It looks like just a very basic collection of software here. It's probably, um, someone probably got it from Arlington Public Schools, and then, um, yeah, okay, AVG, I don't care that it boot, that it was booted up 7% faster. Um, someone probably got this from Arlington Public Schools and uh, with a clean Windows 7 image on it and proceeded to use it for a little while, but probably didn't go very get very far with it. Um, so yeah, well, we got this thing open here. We'll take a look inside. Um, got some spare SATA ports there. Those will be handy. We've got some spare RAM slots. Not sure that you can see it. Um, that's right there like that. Um, I forget how much RAM, I didn't boot this one into setup, did I? Oh, <laughs> you gotta look at the, uh, go into, well, don't even need to boot into setup. We can do it from within Windows. If we, uh, this touchpad is behaving a lot better right now than it did on my, uh, live streaming show. It only has one gigabyte of RAM in it, which I'm surprised in that case that this thing is actually running smoothly because normally when I see Windows 7 running on one gig of RAM it is normally swapping like hell. Um, it has a Core 2 Duo E7300 at 2.6 gigahertz. Uh, the aforementioned one gig of RAM. Uh, Windows is activated with an OEM key. Um, which is interesting. Because this, I believe, had a Vista COA. In fact, I believe it has a Vista Business COA on it. Um, so someone must have had an OEM key available from somewhere. Um, or this is one of those Dell BIOSes that will actually do some automatic activation with Windows 7 disks. <laughs> Which is always fun. Uh, I know, I've actually seen GX620s do that. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's relatively basic. Um, looks like we've got an IDE channel down there to play with, unless that's the, I oh don't know. No, that is uh, the floppy connector, I think. Yeah. It is, right? Maybe I'm just really tired and I shouldn't be shooting a video right now, because I ought to know that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, you can't really see it there, but it has DSKT <laughs> right next to it, to get, presumably. So, yes, that is the floppy connector. Um, even this machine doesn't have an ID channel. Well, it's a small form factor, so I wouldn't expect it to have all the bells and whistles. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's basically what this machine's got. Is the, of the three, this is the only one that actually came up completely. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me pull the other two down here and give you a look inside those. Okay, here's the Optiplex GX270 again. Uh, this time I opened up, I did the uh, dealt with the clamshell thing off camera. Although surprisingly, it actually opened up remarkably smoothly. Um, as you can see, we do have two spare RAM slots, so we can... Upgrade that. We've got two, I believe these are 256 meg modules here. So that'll be handy. Um, what else do we have? Uh, we've got this little riser cage here. Let's see if we can pull this thing out. And that accommodates up to two PCI, standard PCI cards. Um, it just has this little connector here that can go... I'm now dropping things. I'm trying to do this one-handed without really looking at it. It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> I think I got it. I think it's back in there. Almost. <laughs> Approximately back in there. Yeah, I think it's back in there. Um, got that. Is that... What is that? Is that... I think that's AGP. Um... I think it's AGP. I had to know these things. Yeah, it's AGP. So, we got an AGP slot, although that one is forced with the, to use the low profile bracket. It would have been nice if it was inside here, but I guess that would have been a bit of a pain in the 
butt to uh, design that. Um, what else do we got here? We got these kind of sideways mounted IDE and floppy connectors here, which is an interesting old touch. Um, we got lots of these little squirrel cage blower thingies. We got one over here, one similar sort of thing over there in the power supply. It's an interesting design. Um, here's the back of the drives. Oh, we got the hard drive over there. Back of the CD drive, of course, it's um, the floppy drive down there. Of course, it's all IDE in this machine. Um, that's okay for some things. So, yeah, this one's actually remarkably clean inside, especially compared to the other one that I just showed you. Um, so this one's actually in pretty good shape. It'll just need a new CMOS battery. So, let's close this one up and get the third one out. And here's the other machine. Uh, now opened up. It's got a little bit of dust in it. It could use a cleaning, but it's not nearly as bad as the um, as, as the uh, 755 was. Um, board looks pretty clean. Uh, you can see the modem down there. Oh, well, there's some dust bunnies on this side. The board itself isn't like caked in dust or anything. I've uh, got two PCI slots and then a PCI Express uh, single lane slot. Uh, we don't have any wider PCI Express slots in this machine. Um, but a couple things could go in there, you know, like a sound card, maybe. You know, simple things. Um, got the, uh, cable for the floppy drive, I think, routed over. No, that's the... No, that is the floppy drive cable. I think. Yes, it is. Uh, routed around there. Um, we've got ID cables, or of this... Jeez, I can't get any light in here. Um, this kind of broken up variety that can be kind of condensed down into a little, little uh, pile like this instead of being a huge ribbon, which those are nice. Those cables are actually quite convenient. Um, got a standard size power supply here, um, although it has slightly non-standard cable routing out of it. Um, it's got some dust. <laughs> you can see artifacts where the rest of the legacy ports should have been, um, had this been a nicer board. Um, Indeed, there are only two RAM slots, and both are populated. Oh, uh, what else can I show you? There is a spare SATA port down there. So it looks like we've got the uh, um, SATA hard drive. Yeah, we have the SATA hard drive and ID optical drive configuration going here. Um, and then we got this big honking CPU cooler here, which for a Pentium 4 Prescott, well, that kind of makes a little sense. Um, <laughs> this ought to make quite the nice uh, Pentium 4 room heater. <laughs> oh, what else do we see? The capacitors look pretty good. Um, so that's a good sign. Um, but yeah, that's basically what we got going on in this machine. So, I think I've basically hit everything I wanted to mention. Uh, there wasn't anything else I picked up at the thrift store, so I guess we've finally made it to the end of this little uh, epic here. So thank you all for watching, and uh, stay tuned, because I'm sure there will be more thrift store runs before spring break is over.